Hi, my name is Haltor. Uh, I am the CEO and co-founder of Mishkur Games. Uh, we are an Icelandic studio working on a game called The Dark and Echoes of the End. It is an ambitious story-driven action-adventure game that follows the story of Rin, the main protagonist of the game, and focuses on her journey towards independence and self-discovery along with her companion Abram. The Dark and is expected to be around 10 hours of playtime and will bring forward a new fantasy setting for players to enjoy, uh, drawing inspiration from lots of different sources. But we the ultimate goal of being something new and creative and something that people can latch onto as feeling as some a breath of fresh air into the fantasy setting. It's an important part of all of this that the Darken is the first game in a trilogy of games. So we imagine a story uh, where the, the first game kind of tells the origin of this character written and the second and third game kind of branch onto her adventures. So there is a, a whole overarching uh, story to this. But for the first game, we're focusing on establishing the character, establishing the setting and latching players onto uh, what we think will be a, a great story for them to experience. So The Dark is a narrative-driven uh, action-adventure game in a fantasy setting. It's about Rin, but she serves the heir to the Cerugian throne as sort of assassin, enforcer, kind of a dog to be. Yeah, sort of unleashed yeah. on whatever problem the heiress has. To us, the game is a lot about exploring that, exploring this um, this being locked in a role that doesn't really allow you to be much else than a tool. And, and this sort of uh, contentious relationship she has with uh, the heiress. Uh, she's sent on these missions, but she still uh, reveres her as her leader. Yeah, it's like your only friend is the person you are sworn to follow orders from. Yeah. Because everyone else is the people she orders you to kill. So we explore the development of this independence from her throughout the game. Bring in new characters, companions for you yeah. to interact with, and the uh, the first of these is... Abram. Abram, yeah. yeah. Uh, played by Carlos Lundsson uh, so brilliantly. They sort of start off the game in this relationship where they're kind of bouncing off each other as super different characters. Have you got a plan? I am uh, from the boy, and uh, I'm a scavenger. Oh, really? I'll really? kill the nearest guy, <laughs> then the next. Then the next after that. Simple enough. I'm not a fighter, but I'll be right behind you. Because she's this closed, uh, driven, sort of uh, super single-minded person. Well, he's uh, a middle-aged goofball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like they have to learn how to talk to each other in a way yeah. that sort of uh, is almost antagonistic at first, but they uh, get to like each other throughout the game. What's up there? One of those old wards. Yes, just getting a good look at it. Are you getting anxious alone? Just having a hard time making small talk on my own. Yeah, for her it's it's like this missing paternal relationship. I really want to explore that as, as someone who hasn't had that guiding force in your life. What is it like to meet someone that provides you with this love of a parent for the first time in your life? Mm -hmm. And then we have other characters that come along throughout the story uh, which provide different angles to explore Rin's character and how she only has that one friend, the heiress, uh, who sort of locked her in her own relationship sphere. But then we get different characters. What is it like when somebody looks up to her? What, what is it like when, when all these different things start to affect Who am I as a person, not just who am I as a what? tool, yeah. Yep. So we've actually try to work a lot with Altis Ama Hamilton, who's mm -hmm. playing Ren, because it matters a lot to us that the character feels like it belongs to her, that she has real input and real, really feels like she belongs in that character. And more importantly, that the character belongs to her, just as much, if not more, than it belongs to us. Yeah. We came up with something called the real-time narrative system. So as you're playing the game, as you're solving puzzles, you're fighting encounters, you're trying to do something, we like to think of Abram, your companion in the game, as a co-op partner. Like what if that was actually another person playing him? But it's not. As you're, you know, if you're solving a puzzle, you would normally want to kind of shout out to your second player, like, hey, do this, do that. Uh, in a convenient, normal conversation way. So what we came up with what this, was this real-time narrative system where the player is actually able to do that through a branching dialogue tree. So we don't take the control from the player, but it happens seamlessly without disruption or interruption in the gameplay. And that, having everything in real time and having everything happen this way, 
allows us to really dig into the relationship with the main characters and really bring forward player agency within the gameplay itself. And it becomes less of a scripted thing, and more of something that you as a player are an active participant. In. We did it! Excellent! So ultimately, it is our intention to have the player feel as though that they're going through the story with us and not uh, observing it. Uh, so there's this device we're using called real-time narrative yep. where you're going through the story and you're going through the game, exploring and just playing, and the characters are talking to each other. I doubt they care what I think. No, but I do. You're an interesting person, and interesting people tend to have interesting opinions. <gasps> The fact that they tried to kill me a few hours ago does make it harder to care. Ah, but not as hard as if they'd succeeded. <sighs> Why are you so cheery? I thought you were grieving. Oh, I am. But I doubt the dead would begrudge me a joke or two. We didn't want this disconnect where you control the cutscenes, but you don't control what Rin says outside of them. We want you to be able to enjoy both aspects of the game at once. And we thought a good way of doing that would be to allow you to keep engaging in dialogue even while, you do it, while you're doing other things. So you can be exploring with your companion, and it's your choice to question the information he provides. If he's telling you about certain mural, telling you about certain histories, we want you to be able to choose what's interesting there. What do I want to learn? Or do I just want the old man to shut up? Uh, so this, this sort of, uh, the goal is to make there not be a space between there's the cutscene and the story and then there's the game, right? It's all this sort of one interwoven thread that you're sort of going along and, and discovering uh, as you're playing the game, which is kind of like a continuous experience. Well, in its own way, but I never resent going back home. How about you? I do what my lady requires. But do you enjoy it? It's my purpose. I suppose that's fair. But that's the funny thing about people. We choose our own purpose. So through this, we are trying to really blur the line between gameplay and story and merging the two as one. If you perform an action, uh, that's part of the story. And if you have a decision in story, that's a part of the gameplay. And this becomes this synonymous thing for players to experience. And we think that's going to provide a much more fulfilling and engaging story for players to enjoy. Now, the game is an all combat. It's, it's a lot of exploring and kind of discovering this new world. So as you're going through the levels, you'll be able to run about, find some cool things, such as collectibles, uh, journal entries. The player can explore and get rewarded for learning about this new world that we're trying to introduce. So a huge focus is on making our own world, our own sort of... Our own property, our own yeah. culture, to be able to build something that doesn't feel like you've seen it a thousand times before. A new take on fantasy that is fit for the modern world as well. Yeah different, uh, you know, a sort of different approach from the stories we often see. We didn't want to make a fantasy world with elves and orcs and dwarves in the classics. I mean, I'm not going to say we won't have peoples that you look at and you go, oh, that's that's their version of elves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our orcs are different. But we want everything to be based on this internal logic, not, well, this exists in fantasy everywhere, so we got to find a, find a way to work it into our world as well. It's a different sort of fantasy. So this includes building up... Uh, New languages, uh, new uh, physics, like yeah. uh, the way magic works has a very sort of detailed and almost convoluted answer, but it, it's not one we are necessarily pushing on the player. It's one that we make for ourselves or you make for ourselves. A wizard did it. Yeah, no. Which also feeds into the sort of uh, appeal of fantasy games is that you're going through these ancient histories and these ancient worlds and you're getting to dig up how people in the past had sort of tricks that we, we don't know about today and, and stuff like that to a certain extent smarter and then we get to sort of unravel those things. Wow. The city must have been truly beautiful. Once. Oh yes. In its prime, I doubt any civilization could challenge the grace of old Ima. So this has been a glimpse into Mishkut Games and the Darken, and we hope that you are as excited about the game that we're making as we are. So I hope you stay tuned to this channel and watch some of our videos as we upload them. We'll be sure to keep developer updates coming as we develop the game and as we grow as a company. We really want to share this journey, this process of making this awesome project come to life with all of you guys. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs>